Um, it's time to welcome my final guests, the newly crowned 2016 BDO World Darts Champions, Trina Golden Girl Gulliver and Scott Scotty Too Hotty Waits. <laughs> With their trophies. <laughs> Fantastic. Congratulations, both of you, on your title. Scott, a second for you. Trina, a tenth for you, yeah. which is extraordinary, amazing. Are you guys darts? Felipe, have you ever watched darts? I don't watch, but I know what it is. Okay. <laughs> That's a good start. Victor, are you... Every time we come to the UK, we watch it, and we tried so hard to get to one of the events in the World Cup, but unfortunately we couldn't... We weren't no, close enough to one of the events. We would love... Oh, it's... I want to go dance. So... <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It is brilliant. It really is. And it's... Have you been, Claire? I have been, and it is mega. I'm going to take Felipe. If he hasn't been, we're going. Next. Oh, That's I want to invite yeah. us. You yes. can come. We can all go. There you go. That, you now have new fans. Yes. They will be there at the lakeside next time round. Um, let's have a look at how you won your titles. And Trina, this is you checking out for a 3-2 victory against Dieter Hedman. Two tops is all it requires. Due to their eyes closed in practice... A bit different now. 39 left. Double 18 with that three. This for the title. Can she take it out? She can! You were very emotional, weren't you? I was very emotional. because I, I, I didn't think that the tenth was ever going to come because the last, my ninth was in 2011. So there's been five years where I haven't, uh, I haven't done it. And was that because your level was dropping or because the others were just becoming much better? Um, both. I mean, uh, in 2012, my mum was my biggest fan. And in 2012, um, she sadly passed away two days before I was due to play at Lakeside. Um, and we'd had this conversa conversation with my mum, and she said, wherever I am at that point in time, you must go. You must go and defend your title. And, uh, and she says, and the rest of the family have got to go as well. So, which I honoured that, but it's, it's been difficult years um, ever since then, really. You know, so, but the standard of the ladies is, is higher as well. And was that then part of the emotion in winning, that you're yeah. thinking of your mum, obviously? Yeah. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> Scott. Don't start me off. No, I know. <laughs> Sorry. Let me go to Scott. Help you out. Um, Scott, your final, actually, in many ways, was the easiest one of the lot because you had some really tough battles to get there. But come the final, um, you beat the Canadian Jeff Smith 7-1. Let's just have a look. He struggled with shoulder trouble. He's back to full fitness. He's back to his best. Shot. And he is world champion, champion once again. again. didn't it? I mean, it was very smooth. Yeah, yeah, it, it did. Um, and that's the first time I've actually seen that. Um, Jeff, he played well. He played awesome all week. And then for some reason, he just didn't play as well. In the quarter-final against Glenn Durrant, I, I, was, I went to the gym because it's January, so I'm trying. Um, <laughs> and I was on the elliptical trainer and I'm watching the darts. And uh, I'm watching you, and you're, you're down and out. And then you start coming back. And, of course, like, 40 <laughs> minutes later, I'm still there doing this, thinking, I can't give this up. But it was an amazing match, that. I really enjoyed watching it, and the crowd were massively behind you. I've never, ever heard the crowd so loud. It was phenomenal. It was, it was just like a jet engine. It must have been louder than... <laughs> <laughs> it was a massive Ferrari. <laughs> oh, no. William. Sorry. William. 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 <laughs> winning your first world titles 
the TV coverage sort of didn't really pay any attention to the women's game. They might show a little bit of your final, and there she is again, Trina Gallivar winning again. So you never got a sense of your, of your progress. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the crowd wouldn't all stay. Now, everybody's locked in. Yeah. I mean, so they're not literally locked in, they're mentally locked in. No, they are locked in. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, the atmosphere is great, like I said, and they do stay and we are getting more media attention with the ladies and that so which is great you know that's a real big step forward are you allowed to talk about how much money you get for oh, no i can tell so. you how much i got i can tell you how much <laughs> you I don't like asking. i'm very british and i don't like talking about money they find it fascinating other sports well um <laughs> scott got a hundred thousand pounds i got 12. <laughs> so. and yeah. and 12 is an improvement 12 is an improve big improvement from what it used to be you know, it's going up, but it's still not in the same percentage. We're not asking for the same. We're asking for something relevant. And, you know, there's 40 men that take part and there's 16 ladies, so percentage is out. <laughs> I, I don't think he's disagreeing I don't think with you necessarily. Yeah. <laughs> and you are now full-time darts player, aren't you? I am, but I also keep my hand in with the carpentry, so, yeah. Just occasional job. But Scott, I mean, we're very lucky to get you on this programme at all because you were straight back to work after you won your title. Yeah, that's you are, right. You are a carpenter and joiner by trade. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm meant to be going back today, but yeah, I've managed to get a day's holiday, so I'm down here. Well, we had Eddie the Eagle on the show just, just a couple of weeks ago, and um, he was talking about he's a plasterer. And, and I said to him, when, when you turn up for a job, do people know it's going to be you? And he said, well, some of them do, some of them don't, and some of them are leave and they're none the wiser. Do, do you, people know it's you? Oh, yeah, definitely, yeah. <laughs> um, in my van, I carry a load of um, pictures, so I'm forever signing autographs for uh, all the houses we're going. What, whether they want it or not? Yeah. <laughs> it's all right, I'll keep the kids away from the fire. <laughs> Uh, now, Claire, you've grown up around cars, but there is one aspect of driving that you struggle with, isn't there? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't reverse. <laughs> but I, I really can't, and I can't parallel park. I'm really good at driving in a straight line. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so my boyfriend tends to drive, so when we're at home... But thank you for sharing. That's OK. <laughs> <laughs> Do you let your wife drive? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> what never? Yeah, yeah, she does. For sure. She does. Yeah, sometimes, but. Uh, but not if you're in the car. But uh, she always complains because uh, sometimes she stops and then the, the, the traffic uh, light goes green and then she's stopping and then I say, go. And then, <laughs> and then she goes and then we stop again and then she's already thinking about, I don't know what, and then I say, go. <laughs> so we always, you know... You're and, so and lucky she she's never going to see this programme. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I will say to you is do, do not drive with Felipe. Uh, have, I, have we been in a car together before? We probably have. Being in a, a car with a racing driver is always quite a weird experience because, you know, legs out of windows with bricks on gas pedals and, you know, phenomenal, brilliant stuff. <laughs> yeah. well, you were doing that. No, I wasn't doing it. One of our old drivers. <laughs> yeah, and it was my, my little brother's christening and his godfather, who was an old Williams driver. And I went in the car in the church and um, we were following mum and dad in front and the driver is totally loony decided and I don't know how to this day he did it but he put a brick on the accelerator and put his legs out the window and then decided to overtake my parents <laughs> while I'm in the car going hi mom and dad <laughs> thinking the whole thing was wonderful so <laughs> yeah racing drivers are a little bonkers no, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't do that would you never are you a good driver I'm all right I'm better than my wife <laughs> 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 now, the trouble is, your wife, who I presume has moved over here with you, is, is going to see this, I Maybe. suspect. Yeah. <laughs> Are you sure you don't want to say something else? She's a lovely girl. <laughs> <clears throat> Scott, who do you like to have there to support you? Who's the face you're looking for in the crowd when they're all shouting? Well, my girlfriend comes round. She's really supportive of me. And um, my old man comes down as well. You'll always see him, cos he'll be one wearing the silliest shirt possible. I've won three finals, three majors, with him wearing his Mickey Mouse shirt. But he doesn't have like a plonker in it. <laughs> <laughs> Trina, who's there for you? My wife, uh, Sue. And she's a darts player as well, isn't she? She is, yeah. She's a good player in her own right. She's not professional, but she comes on tour a lot with me and plays in a lot of the 
competitions. So, so yeah. do you play against each other? We have done, yeah. Yeah. How does that go? She has been me on a couple of occasions. Just the twice. <laughs> <laughs> How many times have you played? Oh, hundreds. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's it. We've reached the end of the show, but make sure you come back because next time I'll be joined by snooker legend Jimmy White, daring downhill mountain bike racers Rachel and G Atherton and top rugby referee Nigel Owens. Many thanks, though, to my stellar studio guests, to Claire Williams, Felipe Massa, <laughs> Rachel Matthews, Scott 